Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this day. Good morning. It's Tuesday, October 29th, and it is National Oatmeal Day. Not Oatmeal Cookie Day, okay. which I know you said you love, but Oatmeal Day. And we'll give you a, a little history and some nutritional facts. All right. Very <laughs> good. I know. I like oatmeal. Yeah. Don't you like oatmeal cookies better? Yes. Why okay. not make it portable, right? <laughs> All right. Uh, on our show today, we have our assemblywoman from this district, the 74th District, Kari Petri Norris. And she's going to talk about uh, some senior issues. Also, we have a woman uh, here today from uh, Blenheim Equisports. That is down in uh, uh, San Juan Capistrano. We'll find out all about that. And uh, Deluxe Nightclub, they're having an event coming up. And also, we're going to bring you a segment with Lexus. All right, excellent. And uh, the meetings we have for you today is a third special meeting, which will be in the boardroom at 9.30 in the morning. And then we have the GRF Mobility and Vehicles Committee meeting, which will also be in the boardroom at 1.30 this afternoon. All right, so there are many health benefits to eating oatmeal. A bowl of oatmeal daily can lower your cholesterol. It may reduce the risk of heart disease. It may reduce the risk for cancer. And that's according to the American Cancer Society that eating a diet high in fiber may help reduce your risk for cancer. Oatmeal is low in fat, it's low in calories, and it is a good source of iron and fiber. Now, some favorite oatmeal toppings include brown sugar, sugar, cinnamon, peaches, blueberries, strawberries, bananas, nuts, granola, and the list goes on. We have just tons of different types of fruits and things that many people like to put on top of their uh, granola or their oatmeal. Oatmeal is a long tradition in the state of Vermont, which originated within the Scottish settlement. Although there were many variations, most oatmeal recipes began with steel cut oats. The oats were soaked overnight in cold water, salt, and maple syrup. Early the next morning, the cook would add ground nutmeg, ground cinnamon, and occasionally ground ginger. The pot was then placed over heat and cooked for approximately 90 minutes. The oatmeal was served steaming hot with cream, milk, or butter. Now, Vermont leads the United States in per capita consumption of cooked oatmeal cereal. The Quaker Man is one of the oldest advertising mascots <laughs> in America. He was registered by the Quaker Oats Company as the first trademark for breakfast cereal in 1877. And you see him just about everywhere on all shelves, uh, you know, on quick oats, on steel cut oats, all different kinds. So Ken, do you use the Quaker oats for your cookies? Uh, yeah, we have uh, Quaker oats at home. <laughs> Although uh, I have not done this in a long, long time. But um, we've, uh, we used to do overnight oatmeal. So you take the steel cut oats, put them in a crock pot with liquid, whatever you want, a little water, a little cream, a little milk, some dried fruit. And as you were saying, all those different spices, I mean, that just is what makes it. Yeah. And that sounded really good. <laughs> yeah, all those different spices in there. Yes, very good. All right, uh, well, um, unfortunately, we're in for another big round of win that is due to come in a late tonight. Uh, it could be anywhere from around 10 o'clock to after midnight, but the red flag warnings are going to be back up in effect. Um, more than likely around midnight tonight, all the way through probably Thursday, uh, 5 or 6 o'clock. So do expect that. Uh, this time around, they're looking at even, even stronger winds than what we've been having. So we, we'll see how bad they get in this area, but uh, it is up. That warning is up. So today, it's nice and mild. And we'll start to get some late evening breezes, and then the gusts could start uh, sometime overnight, uh, midnight or afterwards. But again, all the way through uh, right now till Thursday early evening. And then we go uh, get into Friday and Saturday, and it's looking pretty good. Around Orange County today, uh, you know, the same story everywhere you go. It's a little bit uh, uh, cooler out there, which is nice. And even when we get these winds, they won't be the hot, dry winds, but they will be cool, dry winds. So there are actually areas in Southern California that are having uh, freeze warnings overnight tonight. So uh, kind of a strange thing to have these both together, but um, just be wary of those uh, strong winds coming in overnight tonight and then probably overnight Wednesday into Thursday. So about a day and a half, two days of this. Uh, so mild temperatures right now, those temperatures probably aren't going to change uh, too much over the next couple days. It's just the winds that are going to start to come up overnight tonight. All right, we'll be back in just a moment. Hi, 
Hi, I'm John Bowser Bauman. You probably know me best as Bowser from Shanana, but I'm also president of Social Security Works PAC. And you know, when I'm in Laguna Woods, I always watch Village Television. Grease for peace. And I've been here since that is more than 30, 35 years, something like this. I don't know, a lot of time. Oh, I love Blenheim. I think they do a beautiful job with their facility, and I think it's really fun that they put the FBI in the derby fields. We love this place. We love Blenheim. I love Blenheim because of the beautiful scenery and the great footing for the horses. I love Blenheim. I grew up here doing the equitation and the jumpers, so it's kind of like coming home. It's compared to Europe, it's, it's a beautiful show. The horses just love the grass. <laughs> Showing here mostly because there's so much grass. They've gone in the right direction and it looks to me like it's going to only get bigger and better. I absolutely love Blenheim. It's one of my favorite places on the West Coast. The grass field is so fun. Oh, it's great. I think the derby field is really, really nice. When you're showing in the derby field, the footing's very good. So, you know, it's always good to show it shows that care enough to make their footing good. Very nice ring, but this is a very interesting ring. It's different. The trees make different. Uh, you know me, I like the nature. They, they just do a super job with the whole production. They did a really nice job of giving it atmosphere and Leopoldo did a super job building. Everybody's super nice. We have a great time. Feel very welcome at Blenheim. There's beautiful mountains and it's just an unbelievable show and great for the horses. This is what happens when a horseman puts on a horse show. I've been showing here since I was a kid, and it's just kind of like second home. It's a lovely area, and it's one of my favorite show management groups, and, and this is a lovely facility here. They do, they do a great job with the, with the ground and the whole show. I really like it. You know, I think they're, they're trying here. When they're trying, it makes you want to try more. It's fantastic for the horses. You got the grass, you got great horse designers, you got everything right here. We we'll love it. On the whole, the Blenheim shows are wonderful, wonderful horse shows. Welcome back. I have Melissa Brands here with, I knew I was going to mess this up, Blenheim uh, Equisports. You got it. <laughs> I think good. I was going to say it wrong, but nonetheless. <laughs> so, you know, Equisports, define the definition. So it really actually was a blending of two companies. Equisports is for equestrian sports. Okay. Uh, Blenheim came from, uh, my father actually started the company, big fan of Winston Churchill, who was born in Blenheim Palace. Okay. And so the two kind of joined together and joined and became Blenheim Equisports. And the Equisports obviously describes what we do, which is we put on hunter jumper horse shows in the equestrian world. So. Well, as I had mentioned earlier, we had gone to the rodeo and it was my first time down there. And you know, I've driven by the park on many occasions, which is off of Ortega Highway. And is it considered La Pata now? It is La Pata, yeah. Okay, so it's La Pata. So it's that big green area that you see. So tell me how it got started in that location. Well, it's very interesting. It's a lot of people now with the opening of La Pata, more people have become more aware of it. But for the longest time, it was like the hidden little treasure. People would arrive there and especially in Orange County, to have such a large amount of open space and beauty over there. Right. Uh, we started 19 years ago at that location, which is quite a long time now. Um, at that time, the way that it began is uh, Joan Irvine Smith had the Oaks, and she was doing some smaller uh, boutique-style horse shows over there. Right. And my sister started riding, and um, my father decided, you know what, this is a beautiful facility. At that time, it was owned by Rancho Mission Viejo. Right. And so we started leasing the land and, and doing uh, large horse shows. He partnered up with a gentleman called Robert Ridland, who is still today the president, and he's also the Olympic coach for show jumping. Okay. And uh, they started the company together 19 years ago at that location. The beautiful thing is that uh, eventually Rancho Mission Viejo had plans with expansion and building there, but the city of San Juan Capistrano was able to purchase that property for open space. Okay and keep it the beautiful riding park that it is. So we've been managing it for this whole time. We now have a management agreement with the city to run it, 
and we've been so incredibly blessed to be you know, the stewards of such a treasure in the community. Um, it has writers that come from all over the world. I don't know mm -hmm. if people are aware, not only in the rodeo world, but in the hunter-jumper world. So we do the annual charity rodeo that Rancho Mission Viejo puts on every year. Yes. Um, and then we do the hunter-jumper shows. We do 11 weeks of shows that start in March mm -hmm. and go through September. And as I said, we get competitors from Canada, Mexico, Europe, all yeah. over the world. Back in uh, 2000 and 2004, I don't know if you're aware of, we had the Olympic trials there, nice. which was extremely exciting because it was the first time in 2000 that the trials had been held anywhere west of the Mississippi oh for my. show jumping. Yes. So it was a huge thing to have them in San Juan Capistrano. And uh, it's not only a beautiful thing for the community because it brings a lot of visitors and you know people stay in the hotels and partake of the town and the surrounding areas but it brings a beautiful sport for everyone in this area to come enjoy and our gift to the community is to offer it for free for people right. to come spectate and we do not charge admission for people to right. come enjoy the shows uh, we have on saturday what's called the grand prix the grand prix is the grandest prize money mm -hmm. uh, of the show uh, the shows run Wednesday through Sunday. You can come really any day, okay. but Saturday's the big premiere event. Usually we run them at four o'clock on okay. Saturdays. Okay. We have a big sign in the corner of Ortega and La Pata that usually gives you the upcoming date. We also have a website that you can visit. I'm sure you put it up there for yeah, people yeah. to refer to um, that gives you the dates of the shows when they're coming. And like I said, we have a set of shows in March, then in June. Right one in August and then some in September. So Now you also said that the park is open year round. So it's not necessarily a show's going on, but you have a park. Tell me about that. Well, we sure do. And uh, kind of like the rodeo, there's also other activities. There's a wonderful event, a community event called Two Stepping Under the Stars oh. uh, that you can go on. There's a two stepping band and there's all sorts of fun stuff that happens annually. Okay. Uh, there's uh, an event that we had Mission Fest that this year had Dennis Quaid playing at oh, it. Wow. Uh, we have soccer tournaments that take place there. We have also county level as well as interscholastic equestrian leagues mm -hmm. that are smaller level horse shows for different pathways and different right. levels. But it's also park and people ride their horses through there, through the trails. Mm -hmm. You have bike riders that come through. You have people that come play with their dogs. Oh. Um, and you can come sit and bring a picnic during the day and enjoy whether there's an activity. Every once in a while there's an activity that has a little bit more of a closed area if there's a wedding going on or sure. something. But other than that, when there's not an activity that is a little bit more private, you can go sit down. And there's always, it's so large that a little area that you can find and tuck in and right. take in the peace. It's one of those places that you just walk in and you feel that sense of, oh, I can yeah, let it, it all is, go. It's absolutely and beautiful. Yeah, it really it is, is a nice place. And it's a, it's a good size, too. And I was, I was, we were talking beforehand, and we were talking about the rodeo, and it had been my first time that I was at a rodeo ever, and I was just astonished and frightened all at the same time. Oh, for but sure. But you said even, you know, the rodeo is a great thing, but then you should also go to the horse jumping because... You said they jump five feet? Yeah, they jump jumps that are almost five feet tall. Right. And you see these beautiful, majestic animals that are working as a partner you know, to the rider. Mm -hmm. And it's so interesting that people come at first and they're like, I don't know what I'm watching. I don't know what I'm doing. And it's really not a very difficult, it's fun because it's not very complicated. It's very objective. Right. You have to make it through the course without knocking any what's called the rails mm -hmm. down mm -hmm. and a time allowed. So even if you don't have experience, you're not watching for technique or anything like that. They have right. to stay on, have the obstacles stay intact, and they have a time to do it in. And, but then as you start getting a following and people go once and they get addicted, you start realizing, oh my gosh, they're counting the steps and wow. they don't know the course before they enter it and they have to learn it and you start understanding mm -hmm. the technique that goes into that and then you realize there's riders that sometimes have two horses ah. that they're riding and the two horses are very different right. and they have to come up with a different strategy for each right. horse because one might have a, what's called a longer stride, okay. which it might take them two steps to get from one jump to another one. The other one might be shorter, so you might need to do three steps. Mm -hmm. Some of them you can cut corners other horses are not that good at that. Right. Some are afraid of the water, some aren't. Oh, so you do have some water. Right, uh, some obstacles, water obstacles, yeah. correct. And so each time you realize, wow, this is not not only the you know intensity of the sport and the physical, but there's a lot of mental mm -hmm. preparation that goes into it and a lot of 
practice that goes into knowing how to approach a, uh, a track and how to do it properly and how to know your partner. Exactly. And also, you don't know what mood the horse is going to be in. Sometimes right. they're feisty and yeah. they want to cooperate. Other times, you're going to have to be very in charge and, right. you know, they're going to... So. Is there is there an opportunity for, you know, if they're watching the show, uh, uh, audience, is there a place that they could go and meet horses or meet the riders? Well, the fun thing is that it's actually pretty open, so you can walk the whole stall area. We have okay. also a wonderful vendor area with some little shops that set up oh. temporarily for the week. And um, so you can go. It's very approachable. It's very That's open. Great. It's not, you know, at all closed up. The only time that the stabling is closed. We have every once in a while what's called FEI shows, and those are internationally recognized federation shows okay. where the stabling is secure uh, due to competition requirements. Okay. Okay. But other than that, I mean, you always, I always ask people, please be very respectful sure. of the horse and the owner. Right. Don't go feed them anything. Don't touch a horse without asking. Usually there's grooms around. Yes. You can ask for permission. You don't want to get hurt. You don't want to, some horses are a little, you know, more scared than others. Right. But most of the time, people are incredibly friendly, and if you approach them and ask questions, they'll be more than happy to, you know, invite you to share. And they're beautiful. They love these are like their children, yeah. and they love them, and they're more than happy to share them with you and tell you all about them. And they're just proud as proud can be, like someone showing off their child. Exactly. Well, I love <laughs> so. it, and I, I really am excited that you were able to come on because, like I said, we had seen the rodeo, and then I saw that there were so many other opportunities for free yeah and i think that's really key and it's not that far it's probably no. a good 15 minutes from here yeah. and super easy access it so. is and we encourage people again to bring a lunch with them make a day out of it it's a great activity for the whole family it's a great date activity and it's something that i encourage people to explore because it's i would say it goes, goes far to say is it's life-changing because mm -hmm. these animals are just so majestic and right. so beautiful mm -hmm. and you go there and you're like i had no idea and right. They truly are something to be in awe of. So exactly. Yeah. Well, thank you but so thank much. Thank you for having me. Oh, you're welcome. And I love I love the fact that you have things year round. And then, of course, the jumping starts March through September. Is that you correct? You got it. End of March. Okay. Yeah. And then, if people would like to know more information, what is the website that they should go to? It's super easy. It's showpark.com. Perfect. So a park that you show at, and yeah. you know, you can find there for it says for you know spectators, and okay. it should have some facts and, and info as well as the dates. And okay. uh, we look forward to hopefully seeing everybody in 2020, including you. I look forward to oh, showing yes, you around. I can't wait. All right, I'll well, give you the grand tour. I'll take oh, you on a course I like walk. That. I'm going to go on the horse walk. Okay. Yeah, on the but course no walk. No, no, no course jumping. walk. Yeah. <laughs> we'll course take you on the walk. course walk, but no jumping. We won't make, I'll, I'll ask you what jump you would like to jump. Oh, I won't goodness. make you. I will make you ride it out. <laughs> we, we rode some horses over here at our little our little equestrian center, and, and that was plenty. But thank you for the offer. Well, my I will pleasure. be out there. Thank, thank you again. You. Thank you. And remember that the uh, horse shows don't start until March, but until then, you can always enjoy the park grounds. We'll be right back after this. I love Glenna. For 25 years, we have worked hard to make Brilliant Smile the premier dental office in Laguna Woods. We take the extra time to understand our patients' special needs and always perform the highest quality dental work at affordable prices in a relaxing and friendly environment. There is no need to refer our patients to anybody else. We perform everything from cleaning all the way to the implant and sinus surgeries all under one roof. Stop in or call and experience the Brilliant Smile difference. Hey Laguna Woods, it's Ken. And Lisa. Did you miss an episode of this day? Not to worry, head over to youtube.com and search Village Television. Here you can find each episode of this day and other community programs such as Good Day OC, Discovering Laguna Woods, and much more. Just click the red subscribe button, then click the bell to be emailed every time we upload a video. Don't miss out. And subscribe today. 
get out and live your life with a Buzz Around XL travel scooter from Golden. The Buzz Around is fun to drive with a tight indoor turning radius so you can go just about anywhere. It's also so easy to charge and offers all day range so you can go further. The Buzz Around even has more leg and foot room for all day driving comfort. Be safe with the XL's ultra bright LED headlight. Plus the Buzz Around XL can be easily taken apart into several lightweight pieces. See for yourself just how easy and affordable mobility freedom can be. This is how we burger brew and cue. Pick a town. Arrive hungry. Real hungry. Start with a massive burger. Charred. Juicy. Add bacon. A buttery bun. Piled high. Serve it up. Wash it down. Creamy. Hoppy. Fruity. Malty. <sighs> We're not done yet. Cue time. Deep fried. Sauce soap. Pork ribs. Meaty. Tender. I'm full. Where to next? All new. Burgers Brew and Q. Tuesday at 9. Cooking Channel. Stay fired up. Gloria always went big. So we helped her plan a memorial service that no one would soon forget. This one's for you, Gloria. Only a Dignity Memorial Professional can celebrate a life like no other. Find out how at DignityOrangeCounty.com. Welcome back. I'm honored to have with us today Assemblywoman Cotty Petri Norris, who is representing a variety of different things that we're going to be talking about here today. And thank you for being with us. I thank know you've you, been Lisa. a very busy lady. Yes, it has been a very busy first year in office, and I'm really proud about everything we've been able to accomplish for the residents of the 74th Assembly District. Well, good for you. And I know we were talking about beforehand that you do travel a lot. You said for the first, what was it, January through, go ahead and tell me. So the way that the schedule works for the California legislature is from January through September, we are in Sacramento from Monday to Thursday working on okay legislation. And then in October, November, December, I am based here in the district, okay. in the community, and it's been such a great opportunity just to, to be back home, to reconnect with the folks that, that I represent, and with the community organizations who are doing such tremendous work. Right. Well, let's talk a little about some of the things. Why don't you give me a summary of some of the things that have happened to you over, this, over the last year? Well, uh, my first year in office, I was able to have 11 bills signed into law by Governor Newsom, including legislation that uh, saves small business owners money on property taxes and legislation that expands access to health care for low-income seniors through a program called PACE. Okay. Um, and in addition to that, I was really excited to be able to bring some funding back to my district and back to Orange County for a couple of really critical priorities for this district. Okay, okay. Uh, one other thing is you talked a little bit about senior scams, and we've had a lot of talk about mm -hmm. scams, and obviously not just for seniors, but that is the primary, uh, uh, I think, demographic. Right, so when, when I learned that scammers and con artists take $37 billion a year wow. from America's seniors, oh, I, was, I was shocked and really heartbroken. So my district office partnered with the California State Licensing Board, and we have brought a series of what's called Senior Scam Stopper Workshops okay. to the district. We did one uh, last month here in oh, Laguna Woods Village okay. and had more than 200 folks come and wow. attend. Oh, that is awesome. Yeah. Uh, there, was a, there was an organization that I had come across that is uh, strictly for Medicare patrol. Mm -hmm. So um, are you finding within that $37 billion uh, that Medicare is a, is a big problem too? It's a part of it. I think what's really sad is that these, these predators, you know, whether they're online or they're in person, they will do anything and they will say anything mm -hmm. to, to take money from, from all of us. And right. like you said, particularly, they do target seniors. So yeah. we've all got to be vigilant. There's new scams evolving and developing every single day. So it's important to stay on top of it to protect ourselves, our loved ones, and exactly. our family members. I like the fact that you're doing workshops, and, and the, more, the more the better, even reiterating information. Absolutely. After another, so and perfect. I think 
my goal and the goal of my team here in the district is to be a resource for the community and to make government work better for the people that we serve. So we are always no more than a phone call away if people have any issues or, or any concerns. Perfect. Now, of course, we're dealing with a whole lot of fires here in California, and you had mentioned that you are partnering with uh, the fire departments or, or just the fire counties. Tell me about that. I think what's happening all across the state is it's heartbreaking. The devastation is just beyond imagination right now. We know that 2018 was the most deadly and devastating wildfire season in history. I think we all know someone who mm -hmm. lost a home, who had to be evacuated, who who lost someone that they love. Right. And so one of the first things that, uh, that I did when I took office, one of my first priorities was to ensure that we're doing everything that we can locally and across the state to support our first responders and to make sure that they have the tools and the resources that they need. Okay. And so I've worked with the Orange County Fire Authority on really innovative pilot program called Firus. And what this program is, it's a 150 day trial and it combines a fixed wing aircraft, which is deployed as soon as a fire breaks out. Mm -hmm. The aircraft is able to instantly go and map the fire and get a sense of the perimeter. Mm -hmm. And then we combine that with data analysis that's being done at the University of California at San Diego. Okay. And they're doing predictive modeling to predict where is the fire going? What, what's gonna be happening in three hours, in six hours? And they're able to give that really critical information to our first responders on the ground mm -hmm. so that they have the mm -hmm. best information possible to make the best decisions they can. And the, the good news is that they've been able to deploy this technology in the Saddle Ridge fire and the tick fire that's currently currently ongoing, yep. and it's working, and it is yep. enabling us to, to better respond to the wildfire threats that we're facing almost constantly. You so know, they actually referenced that yesterday on the news. They talked yes. about how it is predicting where it is, and they were able to evacuate people in the fire path much quicker than they were able to before. So nice program, right. so congratulations right. on that one. Um, vets homelessness. Yes, another one, of, another one of my top priorities. I think as we know, homelessness is a crisis here in the county and all across the state. And for mm -hmm. me, homeless veterans was a particular priority and something that has, has been on my heart, I feel like. No one who has served this country, no one who's given up so much for so many of us, mm -hmm. should now find themselves without a roof over their heads. And so I've been able to partner with the Orange County United Way on a program called Welcome Home OC. Okay. And I secured $2.9 million in funding in the 2019-2020 budget. Mm -hmm. With that $2.9 million, we are going to be able to end veteran homelessness wow. here in Orange County. Okay, and when does that start? The program is uh, is starting right now. It's underway. We've already housed some veterans. What's what's really unique and exciting about this is that it's a partnership between you know, the government, between uh, between our state government, between our county government. We've got nonprofits engaged, and we also have private property owners okay. who are engaged in the program. And it really is a partnership, and we're seeing some good results already. Okay. All right. Excellent. And then uh, you've done some things here with our Laguna Woods Library. Yes, yes. Something else that I'm really, I'm so excited about is I worked with uh, the Laguna Wood City Council and the top of their list was that they wanted to have funding in order to have a permanent library here. Mm -hmm. And so I was able to secure a grant for that and okay. uh, really looking forward to seeing that project. Oh good, so that hasn't together. happened yet. So are yes. you anticipating early next year for something like that? Yes, I think the groundbreaking okay. is scheduled for early next year. All yeah. right, excellent. And then uh, we have a couple of events that are coming up. Uh, why don't you tell me about those? Yes, we are. We're really excited. So this Friday, uh, November 1st, is our first annual Veterans of the Year celebration. Oh, okay. So we'll be honoring one man and one woman from each of the six cities that I represent. Oh, okay. And that is at 11 a.m. at Heroes Hall in oh. Costa Mesa. Okay. And so we'd love as many members of the community as possible to join us and okay. to, to, honor, to honor the heroes that have done so much for us. And then the other, the other event that, um, that I'll mention is each and every month, the first Tuesday of the month, my team is here doing mobile office hours. So oh. we are at City Hall, available to answer any questions that people have, okay. help with any issues you may be having with state departments mm -hmm. or 
you know, getting driver's licenses, getting, you know, getting things done, we're here to be a resource. And so the first Tuesday of the month at, uh, at City Hall, we come to you. Okay, so the first Tuesday of the month at City Hall. Yes. And I'm sorry, what time would that be at, do you know? It's at 10 a.m. Oh, at 10 a.m. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, good. And then how, uh, if people would like to get a hold of you, what would be, or, or just to find out more about some of the events, what is the best way to get a hold of you? So the, the best thing to do is just Google Cotti, C-O-T-T-I-E, Assembly. Oh, and perfect. that will pop up. The very first listing will be our, our website, and you can find out more information about everything that we're doing. And then our phone number is 949-251-0074. Perfect. Well, that's super easy to remember. And then, of course, Cotty Assembly. Yes. And that'll yeah. be easy. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so great much for job. having me. Nice great to, Nice to actually hear some things that uh, I heard referenced on, on the news. So congratulations. Well, thanks for having me, Lisa. It's Probably. been an incredible year and look forward to a lot more good work to come. I'm sure we're going to see you guys uh, sooner than later. Yeah. <laughs> All, <laughs> All right, right. Thank you. Sounds good. And remember, if you want more information about what we just talked about here, you can go to Cotty Assembly on Google, and it'll bring it right up. We'll be right back. you ask me what I wanted to be when I was a child, I would have told you a princess or an astronaut, maybe even a chef. But things change. I may not have become a princess, but I found someone who treated me like one. I may not have become an astronaut, but I still got to see the world. I may not have become a chef, but you would never leave my house hungry. The Emeritus Institute has kept my love of learning alive. Every day is a new adventure, and the Emeritus classes have made it possible to keep living out my dreams. Sign up today and begin your life's next adventure. Save now at LA Carpet and More's 50% off sale. Buy direct and save 50% on carpet and 50% off tile. Plus, get five years 0% financing. LA Carpet, number one for you. Save now at LA Carpet and More's 50% off sale. Buy direct and save 50% on carpet and 50% off tile. Plus, get five years 0% financing. LA Carpet, number one for you. I run Fox News. Anyone outside is the enemy. We need to reclaim this country for the real Americans. Gretchen? Roger. I'm broadening my audience. Well, I hired you because you're a beauty queen. He's a bully. I will do anything to protect my people. I'm a multifaceted man. Well, with me right now, uh, we have Ray Boggio, and he is the, well, I guess the president, the lead dancer, uh, the, uh, I don't know, the proprietor, so to speak, uh -huh. of the Deluxe Nightclub. And uh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, great to have you back, sir. Yeah. It's, nice fun to to, back. it's fun to have you here and talk yeah. about um, this club. And uh, I call you the pr proprietor because you kind of set up a temporary nightclub yes. when you have your when you have these events. So uh, tell us about you know people may have not seen you on before. Uh -huh. A quick background on this club. Well, uh, basically, this club really focuses on trying to be that uh, one spot that um, 
Um, well, you have a lot of really good dance shows. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, dance uh, clubs here on the, right. in the village, and um, some of them are geared towards ballroom. Some of them are geared towards rock and roll, um, mm -hmm. and uh, and then you know this kind of falls somewhere in between. You don't okay. have to really be a ballroom dancer <clears throat> to mm -hmm. come to this. You don't really have to just do rock and roll. You want to do some sort of like nightclub dances. Right. This is what it kind of fits that niche, if you okay. will. Okay. Yeah. And uh, you meet how often? Uh, we have dances about once a month. Okay. Yeah. And I know sometimes, um, uh, you know, there are bigger events than other events. Mm -hmm. This one coming up. And uh, next week is uh, a pretty big one, isn't it? This is a good one. This is um, uh, basically the theme is the 1920s, mm -hmm. uh, or Roaring Twenties, if you will. And it's a dinner dance and also a um, showcase uh, where we have some uh, mm -hmm. professional uh, uh, dancers that are coming on to right. do uh, part of the showcase, and also some amateurs um, that are very good. So is, is part of this where you'll be watching people dance and then you get up and dance with them, or how will that work? Uh, uh, so when you first get there, there's some dancing. You can start with that, mm -hmm. and then there will be appetizers and dinner. And okay. then uh, uh, right as we wrap up dinner, we have the showcase, and then after that, just all, all the rest of the evening is dancing. Okay. And, and lots of champagne. Yes. And uh, <laughs> so it's quite, it's, uh, you know, three, three and a half hours, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so a good event. Yeah, it's, it should be fun. Yeah. And uh, the type of dancing that you're going to be doing here is uh, basically Roaring Twenties, or is that just the theme and all kinds of dances incorporated? It's all kinds of dances incorporated, but, um, you know, there's definitely going to be some... Uh, the showcase is definitely going to focus around the 1920s. And um, one of the dances that uh, a lot of people are not aware of from the 1920s, at, around the time of the Charleston, was uh, called the Peabody. Okay. And one of the... Um, uh, individuals, a, a friend of mine that's coming in from Las Vegas to uh, perform this has, has a show in Vegas that uh, has a theme of the 1920s mm -hmm. and also he's a champion uh, ballroom dancer and uh, he's going to do this uh, 1920s dance called the Peabody which, uh, you know, it's kind of it's fun. It was the type of dance that was done in speakeasies and okay, yeah, it's going to be kind of a it, it, it'll really feel like the 1920s, let's put it that way. And you have uh, also a couple that's going to be here who's, who's done stuff in the village here. Yes, uh, yes. A lot, uh, Natalia uh -huh. and Sergio, right? Yes, uh, Natalia and Sergio, uh, they are uh, former world champions from Blackpool for mm -hmm. ballroom, but they are very entertaining because not only do they just do it from a ballroom perspective, but definitely from a showcase perspective. Right, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely for them. Because I, as I said, we've had them on our program yes. and other programs as mm -hmm. well, and yeah. uh, very nice people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. very talented. So um, this is a, a one price uh, thing: twenty five dollars for me uh, members, thirty dollars for non members. Yep. But you get this whole evening. You get a dinner and appetizers and all kinds of things. Yes, uh, we're going to have. Uh, there's a choice of. Uh, uh, well, the nineteen is going to be ca catering okay. the event. Um, and we usually like to use them. They uh, do a great job. Yeah. Um, but there's a choice of, uh, of uh, Mediterranean cod or chicken marsala, vegetarian. Yeah. And there'll be a lot of, um, like we said, we want to make it feel like the 1920s. There's going to be a lot of champagne there, and it'll be a lot of fun. I also want to feature the, <laughs> the fact that one of the uh, performers is a small troop that's come together around some people here in the village. Okay, great. Uh, they're all women. Uh, they're members of the ballroom club, mm -hmm. ballroom dance club, and they have put together uh, a Charleston troupe. And oh, they're being nice. And they're actually being choreographed by Sergio, mm -hmm. uh, and they are amazing. That's great. Yeah, there's a good chance that uh, I'll try to convince them to go beyond just doing, uh, you know, like... Uh, little uh, showcases here in the village. They, yeah. they are getting to be that good. Wow, that's yeah. really good. And as far as uh, people uh, involved, you've got, you were telling me about 200 uh, uh, You know, our events range between, I would say, from 100 to about 250 yeah, so people. Yeah, a good crowd, yeah. a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, do you do something to this level every month like this? Because um, uh, I remember mm -hmm. last time I thought you said that 
maybe every few months you do something really big like this and the other months are a little bit smaller, am I right? We alternate. Okay. Uh, some months we do a bigger event like this uh, and then the following month maybe a smaller event. Yeah. Uh, in, uh, for example, in January we're gonna do one that is uh, more focused on the 1980s. Ah, oh, okay. Okay, so that should be fun. And, and, and we like these different eras, like the 1920s sure, yeah. were really fun, secretive nightclub type uh, event, you know, yeah. uh, evenings where the 1980s were disco and then you have, you know, the big band era. So we like to play with that. Yeah, oh club. yeah, I can yeah. understand that. Yeah. yeah, that's a lot of fun. So if people want to come to this, I know you want them to RSVP mm -hmm. by um, November 2nd. And I put your phone number oh, up there. Oh, perfect, okay. yes. That's yes. probably the best way and it's um, to call Ray at 949-613-4630. And uh, you can find out uh, more there yeah. and uh, sign up. And um, then they, do they pay at the door or pre? Uh, you just need to know how many people are coming. Well, uh, if they contact me, I'll give them the okay. place where they can send a check. Uh, because we, we do want to make sure that we've got people showing up. Right, right. right. And uh, also for uh, people that catering the food. You've got to know what their choices yeah. and all that. Yeah. yeah. We want to make sure that we set up uh, accordingly and yeah. that everybody yeah. has plenty of spaces and has a great time. You know? Very good. Yeah. All right. Ray, always good to have you yeah, on. Yeah, thank you. And I th I'm glad this is really going well for you. Oh, good. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks so much. Good. All right. Once again, if you'd like to go to the Deluxe Nightclub, their Roaring Twenties Holiday Dinner Dance, this will be on November 5th at Clubhouse 6. Beginning at 6 o'clock, please call Ray at 949-613-4630. There are. We'll be back in a moment. Thanks again, All right, Jen. we'll get you hooked in okay. just a minute. All right. I'm Sharon. I am so pleased to welcome you to JTV. We're a 24-7 home shopping network focused exclusively on jewelry and gemstones. And because we believe every woman deserves to be lifted up, we love to help her sparkle, keep her informed, and make her smile. Our viewer is passionate about jewelry and gemstones, and we share her passion. Because of that, she keeps coming back, making us one of the top retailers in the United States. We sell extraordinary products at extraordinary prices. Welcome to JTV. Did you know that the Laguna Hills Lodge was originally built as a place for relatives or friends to stay when they were visiting? In 1968, Laguna Woods' residents built the first two buildings of the lodge because they wanted a place close by for visitors to stay. Since then, the lodge has become the spare bedroom for the Laguna Woods' residents. The lodge has received the TripAdvisor Award of Excellence eight years in a row. We invite you to stay in one of our recently remodeled garden rooms and take advantage of a special offer for Laguna Woods' residents, family, and friends. South County Lexus here in Mission Viejo, and I have Pat Lustig with me. Welcome, thank you for having us. Hello. It's been a while, nice to see you. Nice so see you. Um, give me kind of an overview about South County Lexus and sort of where, where we're at with technology today in our cars. Uh, technology is advanced and advances probably faster than we can keep up with. Mm -hmm. um, we still have, since the last time we spoke, we still have these technology specialists that help assist our customers to understand the cars and for that matter let us you know understand them so they're the experts um, but technology is advancing safety is the probably the biggest concern fuel efficiencies um, the uh, designs haven't changed too much but the technology on what operates under the cars has changed drastically mm -hmm. a lot of the technologies moved um, with the fact of interacting with your phones some of the wow. biggest problems people have is they live and die by their phones these days and now they get into a car we don't want them to be sitting on their phone and crash into somebody so now getting the car to communicate with your phone so you can communicate while you're watching watching the road right um, that technology is advancing depending on the model there's you know one thing that's really popular on the more expensive models is heads-up display on your windshield okay so you're driving down the road and you don't even have to look down for anything it's all up on your right. on your windshield right um, just in little tiny holograms that right. are showing up on your on your uh, windshield while you're driving which is nice speedometers right. 
you know, the, some of the technologies you're driving down the road and the, the car actually pulls up the speed limit sign on your dash without you having to look at the speed limit. Wow. And then it tells you what speed you're going. So there's some pretty cool stuff. Right. And there's a lot more stuff coming. I've well, seen an advanced look at the technology that's coming ahead and it's, it's pretty much that technology will, I'm sure it'll transcend other brands, but mm -hmm. uh, Lexus is at the forefront of the technology being safe. Right. So. Right. Well, it sounds sounds amazing, and yeah. I, you know, right now we're all a little nervous about some of the technology. So I'm glad that you have specialists that can walk us through uh, what we need to know on the cars. So let's talk a little bit about um, your dealership here in Mission Viejo and why it's different than some of the other dealerships. Um, we've been different. Our slogan is, you know, start off different, just like you, and then right now it's different is amazing. Mm -hmm. um, we wanted to give a small town feel to our customers and be interactive as a uh, special relationship with each customer. Mm -hmm. You know, once you get doing volume and everything, you know, I think we've all been there where you feel like you're just a number. Mm -hmm. You're just that person, you know, you know, irritated on the phone, trying to get through to somebody, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, our goal has always been to build a relationship that's long lasting with each individual guest that comes into our store. Right. Um, are we perfect? No, but we've moved some numbers that are pretty extravagant in our industry. Mm -hmm. And I think that the rest of the industry, especially in the Lexus world, is gravitating towards that relationship building with the customer. Because okay. as time goes on, there's ups and downs in the market, but if you can create a loyalty with consumers for your brand, for your dealership, and for you for that matter, in the car business, that isn't something that's been embraced by the general industry. Mm -hmm. So we've stuck with it and it's paid off handsomely for us and we've got great friendships and relationships that go beyond right. selling cars and servicing them. Well we know that our residents of Laguna Woods come to you and uh, we, we have a couple of cars that we're going to talk about that are some of the most popular cars uh, in the village and we did get to test drive one which was super fun. It was the 2019 UXH 250 F Sport mm -hmm. and so tell us a little bit about some of the features that we went through in the car. Well, I think we went through most of the safety features on the camera. The UX hybrid um, also comes with the all-wheel drive technology. And some people think, I don't need all-wheel drive. I don't go to the mountains. Well, this isn't about going to the mountains. It's, mm -hmm. best, it's basically the overall handling of the vehicle. Right. It is a benefit when you get into environments of rain and snow for traction purposes. But the overall handling and ride of that vehicle is superior to that that is not the hybrid or the hybrid all-wheel drive system. Right, okay, all right. So. Now one thing I noticed, because I had never been in a hybrid car before, I didn't know that the car was even on. <laughs> so tell me how, you know, how do you adjust to that? It's almost like today's day and age, you're, you're in the cockpit of an airplane, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And you mentioned your son's a pilot. Mm -hmm. Well, you've got to go through the sequence of, you know, of things before you actually jump in right. and fly. Right. Well, same thing in the car. And, and the little dash, when I pointed the button out to you, that says ready, yes. that's when you're ready to go. <laughs> yeah, that's true, because you so, don't hear the engine at all. Well, it, it, the car is just not starting a car nowadays. Right. And when you get into the car, there's, uh, I don't, each car has a different number of computer systems in the car. Mm -hmm. It's not just one computer, it's a multitude of computer systems mm -hmm. in there. So just like you load up or start up your, your computer at home, it's got to boot through all the systems. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the way a car is nowadays. It has to go through all of this stuff. Right, right. So. Now, one thing about this specific car is that it's kind of geared towards people of all different sizes. If you could just touch on that a little bit, why this one was so special. Well, the, probably the most special thing as far as the, the culture of Lexus is, it's the very first vehicle that was where the, the chief engineer of this vehicle was a woman, a mm -hmm. Japanese woman. Okay. And I know that a lot of women, or men for that matter, but the, the comforts of a car and how easy it is to, uh, how you feel when you're sitting in the car and mm -hmm. how you look out the windshield. And right. a lot of those things were important things. And this woman put this together with her team and developed this car <clears throat> where the success level of it is huge. I don't know if you guys have ever seen in the freeway where someone's just sitting up there on top of their steering wheel right, that, yes. they, that, they, that they're uncomfortable they're trying to see over the freeway mm -hmm. I never was like that but I've seen a lot of it and mm -hmm. they this vehicle kind of eliminates that right. you know that feel for that it, it's the stature of the vehicles elevated enough to give you that feel of, of, of being able to see everything mm -hmm. um, it's not too high where you feel like you're driving around one of those big trucks right 
but uh, it's just the feel when you get into it and the creature comforts and all the little things about visuality mm -hmm. of outward looking right. um, and then the creature comforts inside the vehicle. Right. So it's, it's, it seems subtle, mm -hmm. but it's important, very important. And, well, and consumers are letting us know that. Let's talk just a little bit about some of the um, safety features that were in that car. Well, I think some of the stuff is, it's pretty much the standard in, in our lineup right now. The technology of things like the uh, lane keep, lane keep warning right. system. If you're, if you're drifting off the lane, the vehicle will let you know. Right. Um, the, if you're blind spot monitoring system and you're looking in, a lot of times you don't see that car that's sitting in your side, you know, you look in your rear view mirror, you don't see it because the person's a little bit too, too close to you or it's a motorcycle or whatever right. it may be the sensors on the vehicle pick it up and put a little light that flashes in your side mirror. Right. The backup camera systems and the pedestrian safety system. Right. You're backing up your car and, you know, someone's, you know, a car's coming in a parking lot and it senses the car and it'll stop the car for you. Cruise control. I mean, you're, you're putting cruise control on and cruise control is not about, it's not autopilot. And if someone's selling you a car telling you it's autopilot, I would not buy the car. Yeah. The technology is coming. I'll give you an example that was given to me in, in the, in the uh, engineering of, of Lexus mm -hmm. is the generation five, which is full autonomy where you don't even have someone in driving the car, you just mm -hmm. jump in the car. Mm -hmm. um, they feel it's way off into the future, more so than everyone letting you believe it's like already there, it's coming right. out. Well, the technology of something going down the, the freeway and reading a billboard where it's got a, a person in the billboard, they can't determine if that's a real person or if it's just a sign. Right. Um, the technology that they had before, if you had a steel plate sticking up on a construction site and this radar device was taking a signal off of it, there's mm. things that can happen mm -hmm. um, that's being refined, but ultimately the full autonomous car is a long way off right. in the future. Right. So one of the cars that we didn't get to drive was the ESH350, which is one of the most popular cars that the folks in the village drive. So just give me a little overview of that one. Well. E, the ES, okay, which is the the uh, sedan, Lexus sedan. It's mm -hmm. a medium-sized sedan. It's not the big LS, okay. but it's it's probably the most uh, the highest volume of vehicle that's sold in the village. Mm -hmm. um, the ES has evolved. It's been out for several years. The very first car that came out with Lexus was a 19, in 1989. It was a 1990 model. Mm -hmm. It was an ES 250. Okay. So that same platform of vehicle has evolved into today where there's more and more leaning towards the hybrid version of it. Right. So a lot of people in the village drive one that's not a hybrid. Well, it's evolved where it's all pushing 50% of the sales are becoming hybrid technology because the price has come down to the parity on the two vehicles is within $1,000 of each other. Okay. You guys are watching a video of that car right now. The ES, there's an entry level uh, that starts in the low 40s. Okay. Um, most of them are in the mid 40s. Okay. Um, they have a, a ultra luxury version that pushes about 50,000. Okay, and did I see that it actually got luxury luxury sedan Best Buy for 2019? Yes. That's awesome. Well, that's great. Well, this has been wonderful. It's nice to revisit. Everything looks great. And I certainly enjoy ride, driving the cars. So thank you so much. Anytime, you come back. I will, and uh, we're, I, I really want to test drive one of these fast ones one of these days. I know right that there. yellow one is, is definitely one of the ones I'd love to test drive just for fun. Thank you again. You're welcome. And remember, if you wanted to test drive any of the cars that we've mentioned or any of the cars on their lot, you can go to South County Lexus here off of Marguerite and Avery. October is Audiology Awareness Month. Studies show that 70% of the people over the age of 65 have some form of hearing loss which affects their lives. Hearing loss is common, yet not healthy. Your brain needs to hear a complete spectrum of sound to process it quickly and accurately. Audiologists are the experts in treating hearing issues. Come to Amazing Hearing and let our audiologists change the way you hear.
Well, welcome back. And uh, our Friday movie is going to be shown at 2 and 7 p.m. It's called Lovely Still. And this is from 2008. And it stars Martin Landau, Ellen Bernstein, and Elizabeth Banks. And it is a holiday fable that tells the story of an elderly man discovering love for the first time. Martin, who's played by Martin Landau, a perennial bachelor, is surprised when his new neighbor, Mary, asks him out on a date. The unexpected romance blooms until Martin's fear and jealousy take the couple down an unexpected path. And uh, like I said, it was a, a romance drama, and it was in 2008, and that will be on Friday, 2 and 7 p.m. So. Okay, and I do want to mention that movie came in. It does not have subtitles. Oh, no subtitles, sorry. So the 2 o'clock one, it's, it's, uh, I looked and went through it, but it's not on the menu at all. So Sorry. Sorry about that. Now, coming up on Monday, a movie I have not seen, but I really do want to see. Spider-Man Far From Home. And this movie takes place uh, right after, if you saw, happened to see the last um, Avengers movie, mm -hmm. uh, this takes, picks up right from there after okay. Tony Stark, uh, Iron Man. He uh, passes away in that movie at the end. Mm -hmm. And so uh, comes to the forefront is uh, Peter Parker. He's relaxing in Europe. Uh, takes an unexpected turn when Nick Fury shows up in his hotel room to recruit him for a mission. The world is in danger as four massive elemental creatures, each representing earth, air, water, and fire, emerge mm. from a hole torn in the universe. And Parker soon finds himself donning the Spider-Man suit to help out. And um, I'm looking forward to this. Of course, I, I like these kind of movies. So wait, is the Spider-Man, who's the Spider-Man played by? Uh, it is played by uh, Tom Holland. Is that, the, is that the same guy that played the Spider-Man in the, in the last? In Avengers, Avengers movies, yes. Oh, good, because I thought he was funny. Yeah, uh, good movie. Like um, Samuel L. Jackson is in this, Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah, cool. So really good. Okay, I'm looking forward to that. That'll and there be will fun. be more. There, people were worried there, there was like some studio war going on between Disney, and, between Disney and Sony, and they've come together to bring them back. Well, even if they yes. have fights, they know how much money they're going they, to make on that's somebody. The thing. So who cares? Yes. <laughs> All right, we're just about out of time okay. again tonight. We're expecting, unfortunately, uh, the uh, Santa Ana winds are supposed to be very strong. Red right. flag warning will go up tonight all the way through probably Thursday evening. So wow. that's not good. Uh, they're supposed to be the strongest event that we've had so far. Uh, we'll see. Uh, but anyway, keep that in mind. And then mm -hmm. the t it's not like the temperatures are going to be really warm. These will be cool winds. Probably However, um, it's going to be dry. So yeah. anyway, we will uh, see you tomorrow. Right? Yep, we'll see you tomorrow. And we have uh, Auto Nation, Toyota Irvine, Envision, and the Foundation of Laguna Woods. So we will see you tomorrow and have a great day in the village. Bye bye.